is the forecast of what will happen to the world in the next 10 to 40 years what will happen to the world and it will be the fulfillment of the biblical prophecies that there will be more heat waves and drought and floods <coughs> so when all this <coughs> happen <coughs> it's a sign that the end time is coming and the end time what will happen first there will be many people who claim to be the messiah and there will be wars and all this the beginning of the birth pain and then the christians will be persecuted so that's the next next thing to come that means within 10 to 30 40 years there will be more and more persecution of christians and christians will be put to death so as christians we need to stand firm and and we must understand that God is in control. That's very, very important. God is in control. Everything is in God's hand. When we trust in God and love Him, He will help us. He will strengthen us. He will give us. He will talk to us. The Holy Spirit will talk to us. And if He talks to us how to answer the enemy, He will also tell us how to be safe. Because if he doesn't guide us, then the Christians will all die in a very short time in a great tribulation. And also then we'll die, you know, die from persecution, also die from uh, lack of food and, drink and water. So at that time, the Holy Spirit for sure will protect the Christians. And, and the Christians who are faithful to preach the gospel, who are faithful to love God, uh, who are faithful to serve God they will be protected more by God so I hope that we'll all see that this is um, that this is coming true now that this is coming true I hope that uh, we all understand that we it can happen anytime now so as Christians we need to be strong in the Lord and trust that God uh, it's in control of everything. Everything is in God's hand. God loves us. God cares about us. He will help us. He will strengthen us. Okay? And so, uh, Christians were put to death, hated by all nations, and many, and then at that time, many Christians would turn away from the faith. So many Christians will become very weak, and they will betray and hate each other. So when they follow Satan, they will betray the other Christians. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Satanists, the people who follow Satan, will force them to tell them who are the Christians and where they hide. And so these uh, Christians who have fallen away from God, they will betray the other Christians and they will hate the other Christians. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people and because of the increase of wickedness the love of most will grow cold so most christians most it says here love of most will grow cold so most christians will have will become lukewarm they will be neither hot nor cold they will be lukewarm so it will be a time that many christians fall away and then and then other christians are, are affected they say wow how come all these Christians are falling away and even the pastors are falling away. So as Christians, we need to be prepared for this. Understand that this is going to come true in our lifetime. So we need to really have strength from God and have the joy of the Lord, the love of God, and have the anointing of the Holy Spirit so we can preach the gospel and build up other people's spiritual life. So this is number three. Christians will be persecuted and put to death and hated by all nations and also many Christians will fall away and they will betray and hate each other and there will be deception and then the many Christians will lose the love for, for God and for people because of the increase of wickedness but then very interestingly uh, very interesting that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come in this difficult situation the gospel of the kingdom will still be preached to the whole world so this preaching of the gospel will depend on Christians who are faithful 
and we want to do it more now rather than in the Great Tribulation. We want to do it now, but in the Great Tribulation, Christians should continue to do it. But now we should do it urgently and preach the gospel and build up uh, Christians' uh, spiritual life. So this is what the Bible says. After the initial birth pains, the beginning of the birth pains, then the Christians will be persecuted and many Christians fall away and they will betray one another and they will hate one another and, and then uh, the, the love for God and for people will go cold. But still in this situation, the gospel will be preached to the whole world. And then verse 15 of Matthew 24. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination of that causes desolation, that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the leader, reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So the fifth thing that will happen is that that Antichrist will come. The abomination that causes desolation is the, the, de uh, the Antichrist. The Antichrist will stand in the holy place. That he will be in the temple of God or in the church. So the, uh, the Antichrist will come and he's a person of abomination that will cause desolation, destruction of the world, destruction of many people's spiritual life. So when this Antichrist come, this is the fifth point that will be fulfilled. And sixth point will be fulfilled in verse 21. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the time until now, and never to be equaled again. There will be great distress or great tribulation, great suffering, unequal from the beginning of the world. Even from the beginning of the world, there is no such suffering and never to be equaled again. And there will be no more suffering after that, equal to that. So the sixth point is that there will be the great tribulation, the great suffering. And then verse 24, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you ahead of time. So here will be false messiahs and false prophets and they'll perform great signs and, and wonders to deceive. So they will perform many miracles. Now, Jesus has promised us that Christians can perform miracles. So what's the difference between the Christians' miracles and the miracles of the false messiahs and false prophets? The false messiah and false prophet will not be glorifying Jesus, will not be teaching people to obey the Bible and obey God. But the, uh, the miracles of God, the Christians who have these miracles, they will bring the people to love God, to obey God, to serve God, to glorify God, to follow the biblical way. Now I have to say that today there are many so-called prophets in order to gain more money and, and get more, man, more people to the church, they will use strange teachings. They will use teachings that, is, that are not from the Bible. So this is a danger. We should be very careful not to accept false teachings, but to accept only real teachings from, from the Bible. Okay, and then verse 29, Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall, fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. So, the eighth point is that after the distress, the great tribulation, the sun will become dark, and the moon will, will not give out lights, and the stars will fall, fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. So the whole heaven will be shaken. That's number eight. And then verse number nine, then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power of great and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. 
So here will be the second coming of Jesus. Then will appear the sign of the Son of God in heaven. So Jesus will appear in heaven. And then all the people of the earth will mourn. They will cry because they have not accepted Jesus. And they realize at that time that Jesus is really the Son of God. When they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory. And then Jesus will send angels and a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds. So he will gather his Christians, his children from the whole world. And then number 10, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels with, with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Now this is the parable of the, of the sheep and the goats. Now Matthew 25, 24 and 25 are continuous. And we can see that this is continuous because it says that when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glory, glorious throne. So it's talking about Jesus returning in His glory. Now when we look at Matthew 24, um, the Son of Man will return, will come in a clouds with power and great glory. So it's the same time, you know, uh, it would not make sense that Jesus will come down in glory and then go back and then one more time. And this time when Jesus comes back, he appears to all the world, uh, all the people in the world. So all the peoples of the earth will mourn. All the peoples of the world, of the world. So that means Jesus will appear to all the people of the earth, to every nation, to the whole world, in glory, with power and great glory. So here. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, this is Matthew 25, it talks about the same event. You know, it doesn't make sense that Jesus will come back in glory and all the nations see Him and then mourn and then Jesus will go back up again and then come back down again. It will not not make sense. And the Bible doesn't talk about Jesus returning to mid-heaven and then just take uh, the Christians uh, with the rapture. Uh, I. I've spoken, spoken in another teaching that that, uh, that the Christians are raptured when Jesus comes back the second time. I mean, uh, the second coming of Jesus, when Jesus comes back. Not, not uh, second coming. The first coming is His birth, and the second coming is His return. So when Jesus returns, then we'll be raptured and taken up to heaven. So here is the same thing that Jesus comes in His glory and His angels. And then all the nations will be gathered before Him. So everyone will stand in front of Him. So He will be appearing to all nations. And then the non-Christians will mourn, as we just read. They will mourn. Uh, so the people of the, of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So all the nations will gather and then he will say to the ones on the right, Come you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. So, so the real Christians will take the kingdom, prepare for them before the creation of the world. Now this kingdom is the kingdom of heaven that will see will be heaven that we can go to heaven and then because they have done uh, the good things to the brothers of Jesus they did it to Jesus so then they will not they will be uh, rewarded by God they will be blessed by God and they will inherit uh, eternal life 
So this is the first group. And it's still number 10, the second group. And he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angel. Verse 45, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of these, one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So the ones on the left are the goats that they will depart from Jesus. They are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That is hell. So they will go to hell, which is prepared If you watch with Global Fire, Pastor Yip, there will be some feedback or echo. But if you watch me on Global Fire, there will be uh, no echo because I'm using a, uh, a mic for that. So it's uh, important to watch me at Global Fire Missions Ministries in Facebook. Okay, so this, those uh, people who have not done good to the brothers of Jesus, that means to the Christians. That's, as Christian, we want to strengthen them, we want to build them up in the faith and strengthen their faith and build them up to love God and serve God. And that's what we should do. And then, so those who are faithful to uh, love God's children, they will have eternal life. And those who don't, they don't do the things that God has commanded them to do, then they will go into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. The hell, hell is prepared for the devil and his angels, not, not prepared for people. It's only when people reject God that they will go to hell. So here we, we have talked about the 10 things that will happen, the sequence. Okay, we'll go through this briefly. So first, there will be many people who claim to be the Messiah and deceive many. Second, there will be wars and rumors of wars, and then there will be famines, earthquakes, and the beginning of birth pains, and also pestilence. And number three, that Christians will be persecuted. So this relates to us, that it will come, it will come within 10 to 40 years. Why? Why do I say that? Because as I said earlier, the biblical prophecy about global warming and the famine and the drought will come true in 10 to 40 years. It will become very serious that there will be more floods and, uh, and droughts and, and uh, famines and also pestilence, that means pandemic diseases. That all this will come true. When this comes true, as uh, the, Bible, the Bible prophecy has prophesied, then it's the time for the, uh, the, the time will come for the persecution of Christians. So the will be hated by all nations. So we need to stand firm together and build each other up and love each other and strengthen each other and help Christians to love God more and to do evangelism more and to serve God more. Then God is pleased with us and He'll bless us. And then at this difficult time, the gospel will still be preached to the whole world. And then the Antichrist will come and then those in uh, Judah flee to the mountains because he will be he will be controlling Jerusalem and then there will be um, great uh, tribulation so great great suffering <coughs> <coughs> So great that there was no such <coughs> tribulation before or after or afterwards. 
and then there will be false messiahs and false prophets uh, and deceive many with miracles these are miracles from Satan and then number eight then suddenly the the sun will become dark and the moon will not give out any lights and the star will fall from the sky now this is the last sign before the second coming of Jesus and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the people in the world will will mourn and uh, and then Jesus will send his angels to gather the Christians that was number nine and then number ten we the judgment the Son of Man comes in his glory with all his angels he will sit on his glorious throne so this is judgment that the nations will be gathered before him and then uh, on the right side will be those who are blessed by God that have done good to the Christians and then on the left side are, are, uh, are people who are not faithful in following God now we're not saved by doing good we're saved by grace through faith when we believe in Jesus then we are saved and uh, but when we are saved we always have the fruit that the life of Jesus will change our life will be transformed by God and then we'll uh, love each other and help other Christians and if a Christian you know so we're not saved by doing good to other Christians we're saved by grace through faith but after we're saved then we'll do good to other Christians and build up non-Christians who believe in Jesus and uh, and if a Christian doesn't do that that means there is something wrong with his faith so we want to examine our Christian life are we lazy to serve God are our members lazy to serve God we need to uh, encourage them build up their faith and then train them to serve God okay so this is the persecution that happens in the world and actually in many countries there is persecution in some countries the persecution is like this anyone who speaks against uh, homosexuality uh, they will say this is hate crime even when people quote from the Bible to say that that uh, God will punish the homosexuals that the Bible does say that and then the Christian the, uh, the in some nations this is illegal this is called hate crime crime hate crime saying that they hate the uh, the homosexuals but actually we love them we want them to to repent and trust in Jesus and have eternal life but they don't want to change now of course there are some homosexuals who are changed and they are willing to believe in Jesus and repent of their sins okay so when we know that Christ will come back soon what should we do as I said it's from the evidence from the global warming It's most likely I'm saying most likely that uh, the great tribulation will happen in 10 to 40 years most likely that as we saw in the graph earlier it's uh, 2060 that it will be two degrees above uh, the pre-industrial uh, pre period that it will become very serious so it could happen in 2060 or 2050 so we need to be ready we need to stand firm so what should we do first watch out for false prophets don't be deceived so if there are teachings that is not from the Bible we need to watch out uh, and stand firm and not to be affected second don't be shaken by suffering trust in God's protection so when we are persecuted you know it could come any time now when we are persecuted then we want to trust in God and have a close relationship with God so we have strength from God strength from God have the joy of the Lord and enjoy God all the time and are not affected by people even when we suffer we'll say God you're with me you're talking to me I listen to you and you are everything is in your hands so I can just trust in you and you can reduce my suffering when I'm persecuted or you can take me away from this place like uh, the angel took Peter away from prison so you can do the same also for us 
So we have faith that God is a gracious God, God cares about us, that we don't want to fall away from the faith. And be prepared for persecution. So the first suffering will be like the famines and the droughts and the, uh, the, uh, the floods, uh, the earthquakes, all these uh, of the pandemic diseases, that all these are the suffering. And then the persecution that will be persecuted by non-Christians. So we build up our relationship with God and strength from God so that even when we are persecuted, we stand firm, we are not afraid. We know that God is happy with us. Four, build up the faith of others and train people to, be, to do evangelism and to build up faith of others. So we want to build up other people's faith and train them to do evangelism and train them to build up the faith of others, to build up the Christian life. So we want to build up uh, our own spiritual life and build up the spiritual life of people and train them to do evangelism, train them to strengthen other Christians. And then five, plan more evan evangelism, that we want to be active in evangelism. Number six, build up the anointing of the Holy Spirit by a deep relationship with God, not with shouting, so that we can hear God's voice for provision, strength and guidance. So we want to build up a strong anointing of the Holy Spirit by a deep relationship with Him, by loving Him, by trusting in Him, by relying on Him, by uh, obeying Him, uh, responding to the Holy Spirit all the time, not by shouting. Now, it's not necessarily wrong with shouting, but don't think that shouting will bring uh, a strong presence of God. Now, sometimes it can help. Uh, because when we shout, then the people are more suddenly they they wake up. But that should not be our main method. It's not the shouting; it's waking up people. But we should teach people how to love God, appreciate God, enjoy God, rejoice in God. Then uh, build up the relationship with God, not with shouting, but with a deep relationship with God, so that we can hear God's voice for provision, strength, and guidance, so that we'll hear the guidance of the Holy Spirit for provision, how to have food and water, how to have strength, how to have guidance, how to strength that we stand firm, and guidance, how to respond to the persecutors, and also how to um, how to uh, serve God, how to build a people's spiritual life. God will guide us. And then seven, find strategies from God in our ministry. So we want to learn to hear from God and then receive the strategies from God so that we will serve God with joy and power. So the most important thing is to believe that God is in control of everything. Everything is in God's hands. So when we love Him and trust Him, He will for sure bless us. And number eight, believe that the ones who are concerned for God's kingdom will be more blessed by God. So those Christians who are concerned about the kingdom of God, who want to bring people in the kingdom of God, who love God, who cares about God's people, they will be more blessed by God. So I hope when you hear this message about the imminence, the imminence of serious global warming, and the fulfillment of prophecies related to global warming. Many of these prophecies are related to global warming. So we, be, we should become aware of these uh, problems. It will become worse and worse. So we want to stand firm and trust in God and build up people's spiritual life, build up the strength of the Christians and train them to, to serve God. And also, we, I hope we all are willing to train Christians of other churches. We go to other churches and train the people to strengthen their, their Christians and not to steal sheep from other churches, not to steal people from other churches, but we want to, to bless other churches so that we we'll all grow together. So I hope we all have this concern for God's kingdom. For myself, I have a strong concern for all the Christians over the world even though they are not my church members. Uh, when I do this live broadcast online, 
I want to help Christians to love God and serve God because I know God is, will be happy with what I'm doing and it will excite more Christians to follow God and to serve God and glorify God and train other Christians. So I hope that we we'll all will say, wow, God is so good. God is so good. I trust in Him. I know that He is in control so I can relax. I can serve God with peace and joy because His uh, burden is light. His yoke is easy and His burden is light. So we can trust in God for His, his strength and His provision and the guidance. So I hope that you will encourage people in your church to encourage them not just believe in Jesus, but to also bear fruit, to strengthen other Christians in the church, to build up other Christians, to train other Christians, to encourage other churches. Now you can watch this video uh, back in um, uh, Facebook, uh, Global Fire Missions Ministries or GFMM. GFMM, you can search for that. There are two GFMM on, online, but when you see it's Global Fire Missions Ministry, then it's, you know that is it's our organization. So I hope that you will have the motivation to train yourself and train other people. The world doesn't last long, so we don't put our hope in the, wor in the world. The world will go away. One day we'll lose everything in the world. We'll lose everything in the world, but we'll gain everything in God. Everything we do for God, God will remember. Every dedication of ours will be rewarded. When we love God and serve God, God is very happy. So I hope that you will say, Yes, Lord, you are coming back soon. You are coming back soon because uh, the scientists will help us to realize that there will be more drought, more famine, more heat, more uh, hill fire, uh, more uh, floods. All this will happen and the whole world will become harder and harder. There will be more and more problems. So I hope that we can tell people about this. We'll tell Christians about this so that they prepare. But some Christians are afraid to tell other people because they say this is bad news. But when we have Jesus, that is good news. When we have Jesus, then we are obeying Him, that is good news. So I hope that we all will say, Yes, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to love you. So I hope all of you who watch online, you will write messages to me and then I will respond to you. I will respond to you how to improve our ministry. Okay? Please stand up and pray because when you stand up, you will feel the swing of the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the biblical support in uh, Revelation 1.17? When John saw the glorified Jesus, he fell down. And also in uh, Acts chapter 9, that Paul saw Christ who was glorified and then he also fell down. So when we come to the presence of God, we can sense His presence, we can sense His peace and love and His strength. And then when He, he, come, when he comes, when God comes in such a powerful way that we can understand, we just relax and let God take care of ourselves and we can experience more love and joy and peace. Okay, please stand up. And you might feel the swing when we, we pray together. We might feel comfort. Okay, let's stand up together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are a loving God. You care about us. You want to bless us. You want to do great things in our life. You want to use us greatly. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us to have strength in you. Help us to be revived by you. That we will not respond to people. We respond in a Christian way. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We love you. We need you. We need you. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Father. Please speak to us. Please guide us. Please guide us so that we'll follow you and love you and obey you. Please be with us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so wonderful. God, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Give us strength. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I hope that you will be encouraged by this message that you will really uh, build up the people in your church, tr train them to do evangelism, 
build up the spiritual life, train them to, to, uh, to build up the spiritual strength of other Christians. So hope that we'll build up soldiers of God who are committed to God, who will grow strong in the Lord and do evangelism all the time and build other people's spiritual life. And have the, if you don't have evil spirit, you can learn to lay hand on people to help them experience the Holy Spirit, help them to experience the love of God, the peace of God, and the healing of God, and then bring them to Jesus. Okay.